One of the biggest and most eyebrow-lifting moments of Godzilla Kong was the reveal of what could have possibly been the biggest, heaviest, longest, and tallest monster of all time. No, we aren't talking about Ghidorah, we aren't talking about Shimo, and no, we aren't even talking about this animal with the enlarged skull. We are, in fact, talking about a bigger, bigger skull. Nope, larger than that. Bigger. Come on, now blow it up! Yeah. That's about right. Yes, there is a whole lot to talk about in this episode, but first, make sure you're subscribed to not miss any of our upcoming GXK Explained episodes. The first thing that comes to mind when viewing this overly large skeleton is how big is this thing? First revealed in one of the GXK trailers, most people were waiting to see the film to see if there was in fact some explanation that shed some light on this mysterious corpse. This skeleton in this film would serve as a bridge, connecting two landmasses that were divided by a river of lava that carved out a canyon over a very long time. Unfortunately, we didn't get much information about this thing in the film, but we do get a very small bit of info in the novel. Before we reveal this, let's first take this skeleton and try to figure out a very rough estimate of the size of this skeleton. We'll start with the skull. The book says that the head alone of this thing was much larger than Kong, and the film does show this really well. But we want more detail. To show how large this skeleton really is, we took the liberty to make a rough estimate using Kong's body as a reference and laying his silhouette flat against the surface area of this skull. The result being that Kong's entire body height can be laid around five times along the length of this skull, making this at least a whopping 1,685 feet in length. And that's just the head. That's right, folks, this astronomically large skeleton has a skull that is bigger than every single kaiju we have ever seen in the MonsterVerse. For reference, here's Godzilla next to the skull. Coming up is Titanus Kong. Still not impressed? How about Monster Zero? And we can add a speculative size of Shima while we're at it. For shits and giggles, we can add Teenager Kong from 1973. Note how the fangs of this kaiju greatly surpass the size of this ape, rivaling that of Adult Kong also. But there's a lot more to cover about this animal. Miles more. That wasn't a joke. So yes, we settled that the skull alone was longer and bigger than any MonsterVerse Kaiju, but what about the length? The best unit of measurement that we have here is Kong himself, who is standing on top of this skull. Given that he is 337 feet in height, we'll multiply his silhouette many times along the visible length of this skeleton. Accounting for the distance, making his silhouette slightly smaller as the image gets farther away, we can count approximately 52 units. And if we do the math, we get an earth-shattering number of 17,524 feet. That is 3.32 miles, or a little over 5.34 kilometers. We'll give you a second to soak that in. But some of us are visual learners, so we've got you covered. The tallest building in the world right now at the time of the release of this episode is the Burj Khalifa, 2,717 feet in height. That means this skeleton is 6.5 times longer than the tallest building on Earth. Want a more vast example? Note that the deepest part of the ocean is around 7 miles deep. Fully stretched, this skeleton would take up more than 47% of this depth. So whatever animal this was could basically swim to the bottom of this vast pit in just a few seconds. Only because it was that large. Oh, and this size only accounts for what is visible in this image. There's a small chance that the tip of this tail could have extended even further. To continue understanding the size of this creature, we'll move on to the very first image that was released of this skeleton, the rib cage. Note how both Kong and Suko looked extremely small when walking along the spine of this skeleton. But how tall are those things? Again, thanks to the presence of Kong in this footage, we can use him as the unit of measurement and multiply his silhouette up approximately four times along the length of the longest rib here, approximately 1,348 feet in height. To explain how large this thing is, imagine standing near the Empire State Building in New York City, a rib this tall would stand at around this height, surpassing the overall height of the building itself, only barely surpassed by the tip. But this brings up another fun thing to point out, the length of the head. 
Oh yeah, it seems as if this animal may have had an enlarged head after all. Since the overall length of this head was more than five times the height of Kong, standing this skull next to this Empire State Building would lay bare how massive this skeleton really is. All in all, the space inside this ribcage would possibly even be wide enough for Ghidorah to comfortably walk in between this massive ribcage if it was on the ground. But this wasn't the only time we've witnessed big rib cages like this. Moving ahead in the film, we find that in the Great Ape's lair, there are also remains of these same skeletons. As we see here, dwarfing every single life form found here, and yes, even Shimo. Even the Playmates figure pack features these enlarged ribs as additional accessories. So does the book tell us anything about these remains? Well, not so much, but it does confirm that these were in fact living creatures. Previously, we discussed the small possibility that these bones were carved by the great apes and served as a bridge, only because of the fact that this thing seemed too large to fit in this cinematic universe. The book says otherwise, confirming that these actually used to exist at some point in time and for some reason died out. Interestingly, this is not the first time we actually see crazy enlarged skeletons just lying about. No, we aren't referring to this one, we're actually talking about a bigger one, somewhat similar to this skeleton here. In the animated Netflix series Skull Island, we see a strangely similar skeleton laying in the desolate terrain in a certain location in Skull Island. Similar to this image, these oversized ribs would stick out of the ground. Additionally, the skull of this animal somewhat resembles the one in GXK. There is one last and perhaps the most important question to answer. What did these things look like? We already got confirmation in the book that these at some point were extremely large animals. We aren't given a name and we probably won't be seeing these creatures in their living form anytime soon. The best we can do is reconstruct this animal with what we already have. To start, let us begin with the posture. Given its large head and the fact that its shoulder blades are very close to the head and hips far down along the length of its body, we can assume the animal had a rather low posture, similar to a lizard. More evidence to support this is the presence of a very long tail, almost the same size and possibly longer than its actual body. But something seems… lacking. Where are the legs? Well, if you look closely, you'll see that the remaining bones are over here. Perhaps the great apes, after running into the corpse of this giant skeleton, positioned it to better bridge these two landforms, moving the legs aside. Leaving the skull of this creature here, using the fangs to keep it anchored to the ground for it to prevent slipping, and the weight of the rest of the body bearing down on the ground, keeping the ribs and vertebrae suspended, serving as a bridge. So far, we've hinted at this thing probably being of reptilian appearance based on the skeletal anatomy of its body. However, the skull of this animal also resembles that of a mammal. Given that some titans do seem to resemble hybrids of animals of completely different classes, it's not too far-fetched to think that this one in particular may have shared attributes of both mammal and reptile. Here on Goji Center, we took the liberty to try to recreate one of many possible ways this animal could have looked like based on what was previously discussed. The first thing you're going to notice is the fact that this creature may have had some luminescent elements. Why? The caloric intake of these colossal titans would have been so much to the point that it would be unsustainable. In no time, the entire Hollow Earth ecosystem would have been drained of vegetation or other prey to keep these things alive. So the other, more plausible way to keep these things alive would be by absorbing radiation. Similar to many titans like Godzilla, Ghidorah, Scylla, etc. Radiation plays a vital role in the sustenance of these creatures. Therefore, it's only reasonable for these creatures to feed on radiation. Since there's plenty of that down here and not enough food on the planet to keep these things alive for a long enough time. This may also be an explanation of why these creatures die. Crocodiles, who by the way have a somewhat similar skeletal anatomy to this one, age very slowly and most of the time die of disease, predation, habitat loss, but almost never from aging. That's because they go through a phenomenon known as negligible senescence, which is when an organism does not exhibit any evidence of biological aging, which is why you see animals like tortoises and big crocodiles live for a very, very long time. These guys usually die of stuff other than aging. So back to our big skeleton, these guys probably died out due to their bodies being so large that the radiation intake was not enough to keep these guys functioning. 
At some point during their lives, their energy intake began to be unsustainable, causing them to in a way starve of radiation and then proceed to die. Since, to be honest, these things are way too big to be hunted down by anything that we know of. The existence, appearance, and fate of these creatures will remain a mystery until more information and canonical material is released. These were once powerful creatures, but the fact remains that the Titans, the Great Apes, and other megafauna ended up being the ones who prevailed in the Hollow Earth.